Hey guys, follow me on a culinary adventure. We're gonna make tuna cakes. Okay, so ingredient number one, of course, are tuna. You can use any tuna you want. This happens to be tuna that I caught and my coworker canned for me, but you can use any pouch, can, jar, anything you want, and any quantity you want. Next, we're gonna have a couple eggs, breadcrumbs, these are gonna be the main bulk. The breadcrumbs combined with the tuna are the main bulk. The egg holds it all together. We've got Parmesan for flavoring, and it's gonna, Parmesan, when you fry them, it's gonna develop a nice crust. Salt and pepper for seasoning. A little bit of lemon juice, because what's seafood without lemon juice? Onion to give us some crunch in the tuna cake. And parsley to give us some color. Step one, drain your tuna. Now we're cooking at Bay's house. So the biggest bowl she has happens to be this pot. So we're gonna use this. This is also very realistic, guys, that you don't always have all of the ingredients you need. Um, you don't always have all the cookware you need, so you can work with what you have. Mm -hmm. And I have a big pot, and that's what Bay is going to use. Okay, so our main ingredient is the tuna, and now we have breadcrumbs. Breadcrumbs are gonna be our base. And we're going to sprinkle in about a cup. And just cover those up. And we're going to adjust as we go. I'm sorry that I'm not giving you exact measurements. That's just the way it is. That's how you know he's a real cook when there's no real measurements. <laughs> if you're like me, um, you use measurements. We're going to start off with one egg. We might do more. And you did that with one hand. And I don't know how to do that. And bounce a little shell in there. Mm. Okay, so the egg's going to hold it all together. And now, what's seafood without some lemon? So I'll sprinkle a little lemon in here. So are you just going to use juice of half a lemon? I'm going to use about one light squeeze of a half a lemon. <laughs> and then we have to dice our onion because we need some crunch in there. We're at Bay's house, so the biggest knife we have is... I have bigger knives than that. Don't play me. Don't try to play me. I have bigger knives. That's the one you're, you've chosen to use. Okay, let's get the bigger knife. Oh my god! No, babe, I have literally two other knives in there that are just that are bigger than that. You do? Yeah, but you, they're not as sharp, so you don't like them. Where are they? They're in front of you. Literally, this is bigger than that. Well, I have one knife that's bigger than that, but you don't like how sh that one's not sharp enough. So yeah, you, let's just use this one. So this is the biggest, sharpest knife we have. We're gonna use, we're only making two, uh, tuna cakes for two. So we're gonna use about a half of a small onion. What kind of onion is that? This is a red onion. Okay. Does it matter if you use red onion or white onion or yellow onion? Uh, you know, actually I would have used a yellow onion, but because I knew we were only cooking for two, I wanted a small onion and this red onion happened to be the smallest one I saw, and I figured, hey, might as well. So for this recipe, you can use any onion size you, or any kind of onion you want? Yeah, I've only used, this is actually my first time using red onion, but I think it'll be fine. Have you, like, first time using it for this recipe or cooking with it at all? For this recipe. Okay. So you want your onion diced as finely as you can because it's just there to give a little texture and a little flavor. And onion is the king of the vegetable. I hate onion. I like garlic. Gar garlic rules in this household. But you can use onion in almost anything. You can use onion in these tuna cakes. You can throw it on top of pizza. It's in like every Indian food dish. How do you make it so that your eyes don't water? Um, my eyes right now, they should have been watering like 10 minutes ago, cutting this onion like this. I don't know how they're not yet. I've heard that you can chew like bubble gum while you're cutting it and it helps to make it so that you don't... Um... I do not know. Actually, I do know for a fact to reduce the amount of tears is use a sharp knife. <laughs> Is that real? That's or, real okay. <laughs> I thought you made that up. Because what happens is 
when you, the onions, onions are made up of cells, just like any other living thing. And when you use a dull knife, uh, you crush the cells as opposed to slicing through them. And so when you crush the shells with a dull knife, it releases more... You said shells. Cells, okay. When you crush the cells with a dull knife, it releases more of the whatever chemical makes you tear up into the air. So if you can use a sharp knife, you release less chemical into the air, and then you don't get as teary-eyed. You're like Bill Nye the science guy. Can Bill Nye cook? I don't know. I don't know his life. Okay, so we're going to throw half of the small onion in. All right, and then let's get some parsley in there, too. Parsley should just be a garnish, but I happen to like having some parsley in the tuna cake itself, just because it's nice. It's nice color. And again, guys, this is real world cooking, so I know some people have great elaborate kitchens, and as you guys know, if you look at any of the food videos I post on Instagram or Snapchat, I have a really nice kitchen at work. Um, at home, I do um, the best with what I have. <laughs> So don't feel intimidated or like you need to have a bunch of stuff to be able to cook a good meal. Look at you getting fancy. Yeah. With this little itty bitty knife. It's kind of hard. Okay, and so don't don't forget the parsley at the end also. But we're just gonna throw a little inside. So what you're dicing up right now is this the portion that's gonna get added in there now? So it's going in. And so then you'll cut more for later? Yeah, and I'm going to cut all that right now, too, while we're at it. Okay. Now, any parsley going into the tuna cake, you want it very, very finely chopped. Any parsley going on top for garnish, it can just be loosely chopped. Because anything going into the tuna cake, you want to be very fine. You only want very finely chopped items in the tuna cake. Uh, because any big chunks are going to stand out. And the only thing standing out should be the tuna itself. Okay, so reserve your garnish for later. Do we use more than one egg for this recipe? You can use two. But um, if I was making a bigger batch, I might use two. And I might adjust. If it's not holding together, if it's falling apart, then we might add another egg. I've heard that also once you mix everything, you should let it chill in the refrigerator for 15 to 30 minutes so that it doesn't fall apart instantly when you put it in the um, pan. Okay, a couple shakes of salt and pepper. Okay, everyone's at the party. Now we're going to mix it up. And I don't have a whisk. So we're just going to get our hands right in there. Break the tuna up. Look at this nice big chunks of tuna. And I think it's really cool that this is tuna that you caught yourself. Yes. We went off the Washington coast out of Westport, Washington and caught tuna. And my, my coworker <clears throat> so graciously canned it for us. Okay, so this is, if you see, I've combined it all and it's, when you look at it, I can see a lot of tuna in here. And so I'm going to add some breadcrumbs because I do want to spread the tuna out. So should it be like, what's the ratio of breadcrumbs to tuna? Obviously, is tuna what you want the most of? You, I, you kind of want half and half. And then now that I'm adding more breadcrumbs, we're going to need another egg in here also. Was that a shell? That was a I shell. Almost said, I, got it. I almost said no shell, babe. <laughs> Okay, so we got more breadcrumbs, more egg. So we're adjusting as we go. It smells really good. Do you need more lemon? I can kind of smell a little lemon. So I'm going to stay with the amount of lemon that we have. We don't need too much. If you have small hands like me, you can feel free to use both hands to mix. Yeah. I'm keeping one hand clean so that I can still do things as I'm going. I don't want to stop and keep washing all the stuff off my hands. And I'm also not a good assistant. I mean, I'm good for filming. I'm not good for handing him Okay, things. so it's very thoroughly mixed. Now we're gonna test how well it holds together. Take some, clump it up. 
Yeah, get a close up on my really gross looking hands now. Maybe your it, hands don't look gross. You see it holds shape very well. Look at this. It's holding a shape very well. This means it's totally ready to be a tuna cake. So I'll grab a palmful and start forming patties. Okay, so we're taking palm-sized balls, flattening, flattening them out. You want them flatter than a hockey puck. Mostly in it is because it just gives it a nice little green pop. And you eat with your eyes. Remember that. You eat with your eyes. What does that mean, eat with your eyes? You, you eat with your eyes. It means if you look at something and it looks good, it's probably going to be good. Okay, so since we forgot to put Parmesan in, we're going to sprinkle it on top. What we're going to do is we're going to get a little messy, but it's okay. This is Bay's house. Bay can clean it up later. You could also not be as messy if you wanted to maybe conserve how much Parmesan you were using. Um, could, I'm not yeah. sure if you're going to just flip it over and then get the other side as well. Oh, yeah. So Pat it down. Flip it over. And they're holding together really nicely. They're holding together very nicely. It's because of the breadcrumbs and the and the uh, egg. I feel like you have enough that's still on there to just pat it into there. Yes. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you could get that stuff. Yes, we probably could. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to flip one. <laughs> okay. Do you need to let this sit out, like, sit on it at all for a period of time? Or can you just kind of go from this to frying them? Uh, we're going to go directly to frying, and it's going to turn out just fine. What are you going to use to fry? We're going to use olive oil in the pan, or vegetable oil. You could even use butter if you want, but butter might burn a little bit if you do it, if you do it at a high enough heat. So get as much Parmesan as you can, and then tap it in. Just tap it in. And when you when we fry these, the Parmesan is going to give it a real nice crust. And I mean, it's, it's fried cheese. Can you go wrong? Yeah, I think that mm -hmm. your medical report would say that you did go very wrong. <laughs> Just frying cheese. Well, this is not a health show. Okay. This isn't Dr. Oz. All right. This is Nurse Mike. We're ready to fry. Yeah. You put how much in there? It's just a well-oiled pan. There's about an uh, eighth of an inch of oil. Cover the, the bottom of your pan? Cover the bottom of the pan. It's on medium heat. We're going to slide our tuna cakes right in, and you should see it sizzle, and hear it sizzle. About how long are we going to cook it on each side? We're going to do about five minutes on each side, and you want it to, we'll check them in a few, and we'll want it to be golden brown. Okay, so I just checked and they're golden brown. So we're gonna carefully flip. That's the color you want. And a few more minutes. And then we'll pull them off. Okay. They've been on a few minutes on each side. They're golden brown. We're gonna pull them off. And I notice we're pulling them off just as the grease is starting to pop. Yep. And I'm just shaking off excess grease. If you don't feel comfortable enough shaking off excess grease, you could always put a paper towel on your plate and let it soak anything up. Next batch in. Three for Big Boo, three for Little Boo. Um, Little Boo wants all six of them. I'm so fucking hungry. <laughs> We're going to dump all our excess oil into a jar.
And now we're going to use this pan to create our lemon sauce. Okay, we're going to make our lemon butter sauce. So we've got pan, nothing in it, low heat, fill it with lemon juice. Okay, now what's, what's fish without lemon? So this lemon butter sauce is really simple. We're just gonna get this lemon juice to heat, and then we're gonna throw some butter in, stir it around, do some salt for seasoning, throw a little parsley in, and then we're gonna drizzle it over our end product. But he is gonna take all the seeds out, yeah, so we're seed that's out. the one pain. Okay, so we've got our lemon juice to heat. We're gonna add our butter. Little Boo usually freaks out when she sees me using this much butter, but I just tell her don't worry about it. Look, look away if you have to. We're gonna melt this butter down. The reason that I freak out is because Mike cooks everything with butter. His family, he grew up in the Pacific Northwest, but his family's from the Midwest, so they love sucking butter. And we just can't sustain a life if we are eating that. You, you can, though. You actually can. I just... You just... You can. We'll you agree just, to disagree? Yeah, you just you do it. He cooks it and doesn't tell me it's in there, and I eat it. And, say, and I say it tastes really, really good. He's like, yeah, it tastes good because there's butter in yeah. there. But we're also making a sauce, and like you told me, sauces tend to have butter. You don't have to eat all the sauce, but you got to make it. I want all the sauce. Okay, we're gonna go, we're gonna see how that tastes before we keep adding more butter. A little bit of parsley into our sauce for some more flavor. And then, gotta season it. Crack of pepper. Crack of salt. Salt. Not pepper. Not pepper, salt. salt. What do you think? It's ready. Now we plate. Okay, now we're gonna drizzle sauce over the lemon cakes. Tuna cakes. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be fucking lemon cake. We used all those fucking lemons. That's why he's calling it a lemon cake. <laughs> and a little bit over the couscous, a little bit over the asparagus. This lemon butter sauce, you can't go wrong. You could put it on you could put on a brownie and it would be good. I mean, obviously we're not going to do that. He's it's a figure of speech. We could though. We could. We can. <laughs> oh, and then final touch. And the final touch. And voila. Those are tuna cakes. Enjoy.